So for the last Screwball video we did, we issued a challenge to home bartenders to create a cocktail with Screwball. And today is the day that we declare a winner. My name is Leandro Dimon Riva. This is the Educated Barfly. When you shake and smile, I just see a serial killer. There's dead hookers in your closet. You can't hide it any longer. All right, the first cocktail up is the Screwball Club Cocktail by Sean Carmichael. Let's do it, Marius, shall we? So first thing we're gonna do is half an ounce of lemon juice, one dash chocolate bitters, Half an ounce of raspberry syrup. And this is where the cocktail gets interesting. Half an ounce of mezcal. We're using Espadine mezcal. And then 1.75 ounces of screwball, like so. This is an egg white cocktail. So I saw someone comment on this today, so I just wanted to just say this, even though it's not really part of this cocktail. If you don't wanna do egg white in your cocktails because you're afraid of it or you don't like it or you think it's gross or whatever, you can always use uh, something like this. This is like a foaming agent from Fees. I think somebody actually said, Do, did you ever try Fees foaming bitters? This isn't a bitters, it's just a foaming agent. Uh, it works really, really well. We did a test a little while ago uh, with uh, a couple of different foaming agents. This was one of them and it did pretty gosh darn well. So I'm gonna use egg white in this cocktail because the creator used egg white and when I do these competition cocktails, I wanna make sure that we do them exactly the way they were intended to be made. Uh, he also asked for a reverse dry shake on this one as well. So we're gonna be doing that too. Crack our egg, separate the white, add ice to our egg tin. Just gonna do two big pieces of ice. Shake it. Now let's extract our ice. And then we're gonna add our cocktail and give it a nice hard shake. And while I shake, I might as well go get a glassware. All right. So this recipe calls for pitted cherries garnish. I didn't get cherries today when I was at the store. I forgot, so I'm just going to do a Luxardo cherry, which is a pitted cherry, but I'm assuming he probably wanted it on a skewer on top. This I'm gonna put inside the cocktail. I mean, it's a tasty drink. It's really nicely balanced. It has obviously the chocolatiness, and then you get uh, a little bit of that acid from the lemon juice. I could probably stand for a little bit more lemon juice, uh, followed by the raspberry syrup and the screwball, which is really nice. You get that kind of PB&J sort of feel to it. So obviously you get the peanut butter from the screwball, and then you get this nice jammy raspberry note from the raspberry syrup, no surprises there. Um, you, the mezcal seems to be a little bit lost in this drink, and I'm just wondering if I should have picked a more smoky mezcal because it would be nice to have that smoky note. But for now, it's just really getting lost in this cocktail. Uh, the lemon juice is great. Uh, I would want this cocktail to be a little bit more tart, maybe just another quarter ounce of lemon juice. But I will say that the dash of uh, chocolate bitters, which also gives it a nice chocolate note, saves this cocktail from being overly sweet. Very nicely constructed cocktail. Uh, really like it a lot. It, it is a tiny tad bit on the sweet side for me, but I also tend to uh, kind of shy away from the sweet and go more towards a little bit more acid in my cocktails as I've just described anyway. So there it is, Sean Carmichael, very good job. Your uh, Screwball Club cocktail is fantastic. So the next cocktail we're doing is called a Flor de Peanut Butter Jerez Swizzle, uh, named after the Flor de Jerez cocktail. It was created by Peter Patrician. A full three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, Angostura bitters, a quarter of an ounce of apricot liqueur. We are using the raw from the winter. One ounce of screwball, and an ounce and a half of Montelado sherry. We're just gonna pour this into the glass because I could have built it into the glass. Add some pebble ice. I haven't done the swizzle technique too much in this channel, so it'd be nice to show you guys again. We're just gonna give it a nice swizzle. 
I like to work the swizzle stick up and down, really kind of mix it. It's a very old kind of antiquated technique of making cocktails, but it does give you really nice results. So you can just swizzle until your glass starts to get a little frosted on the outside. Top this guy up with more ice. I'll put a little straw up in this guy. And of course, we want to give it its garnish. And when you guys are doing mint sprigs, you want to make sure to make them very robust, bushy. So you don't want to just do a little skimpy guy. You want to do like a nice big bush like that. Give the old slappy poo, give it a crushy pants. Don't be afraid to allow the mint aroma to shine. And then we're just going to stick this right by our straw here, like so. How beautiful is that? Let's give it a sip. Yes. This drink is fantastic. Okay, screwball aside, we know that you get the screwball. Uh, and what's really nice is that it's really masterfully done here because what he did was he took the screwball down to an ounce, right? Because it has that nice, big, vibrant flavor. You're not gonna lose screwball in any cocktail, no matter how many ingredients you layer on top of it. Then he paired that up with a little bit more of a Montelato Sherry, 1.5 ounces. And then what that does is that you get this nice acidic, almost savory and acidic and a little bit sweet. And then you pair that up with the uh, with the peanut butter, and then you get this really nice kind of peanut butter flavor. Uh, the Angostura bitters kind of brings a little spice into it. Obviously, you got your simple syrup that's balancing out that three quarters of an ounce of a lemon juice. But what's really nice is that it's only a half an ounce of simple syrup, and then you have three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, and then the rest of the balance of that sweet to tart kind of ratio is the uh, apricot, uh, which is really nice. That apricot liqueur just brings in this nice little apricot touch. This is a really fantastically balanced cocktail. It's awesome, I love this. Um, this is really, 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 really nice. So there it is, the Flor de Peanut Butter Jerez Swizzle. I really, really like this. Very good job on this cocktail. All right, the last cocktail we're doing today is from Mickey Flam, and it's called The Flying Nutsman, which I love just to play on words. It's really funny. Um, this cocktail I chose because this dude, he took a big, big swing on this drink. Uh, now, I, what I was wanted to talk a little bit about in this cocktail is like why Mickey Flam took such a big swing here. There is no acid in this cocktail. Um, it is all booze and it, usually this would be like a stirred cocktail. Kind of reminds me of the Japanese cocktail from the Professor Jerry Thomas in that the Japanese cocktail is just booze and orgia. So it's kind of like a play on that, but we are shaking this with ice, which is, and I guess it's gonna go in a coop. Um, so the other note that I wanna say is, uh, I'm assuming that when he wrote gin, he meant like a London dry gin. I'm actually using Mulholland, which has a little cucumber vibe on the back end, which I think is gonna go fantastically with all, it's gonna just put it in a whole nother realm. It's just gonna twist it and I really wanna taste it. So we're doing it with, uh, with the Mulholland gin. First thing we're gonna do is, it's really simple. We're just gonna do three quarters of an ounce of orgia. I always, I always forget these things, so I'm gonna do it now. Uh, he put in the description of the recipe that it needed saline solution. He didn't say what percentage, so I made a 20% saline solution here. Three drops of saline solution. Three quarters of an ounce of Frangelico, which is a hazelnut liqueur. Three quarters of an ounce of our gin. And then we're gonna do one ounce and a quarter of screwball here. Add our ice to our big tin. Marry our cocktail in. Give it a nice shake. Give it a nice strain. All right, let's taste this. Wow. All right. Obviously this thing is gonna be on the sweet side. Um, and then shaking the cocktail was actually a very good call because that extra added water is gonna lengthen out that sugar. It's really nice, you, you know, obviously you get that, you know, screwball first and then you get the Frangelico, you know, and you get the Orja and you get those, that kind of nutty vibe, obviously. I mean, this whole thing is made out of nuts, but this drink hinges on the gin you use. The gin is providing all of a, a lot of other characteristics into this cocktail. It gets a nice kind of floral, botanical vibe that plays really well with the nuttiness. And I will say that it, it skews really sweet, but the gin does a pretty good job tempering that sweetness. 
I gotta say that the Mulholland was a fantastic call in this drink. You get that cucumberness right on the back end, it's really, really prominent, and it plays really well with the other flavors. The saline solution also gives it a bit of saltiness to it, which is the other thing that's going to really, really, really tame that sweetness, all of that sugar that we've added in these very sweet syrups and liqueurs. So the gin is the most important thing in this drink. You know, your gin preference is going to be uh, what kind of makes or breaks this drink. I really like the cucumber with all of these flavors. It's really, really good. I, I mean, I hate to, I, I keep on just harping on how, how good a call that was for gin, uh, but it really was. Uh, if you do a London dry gin, you're obviously gonna get a little bit more citrusy of a vibe to it, which is kind of nice in the construction of the cocktail where like the citriness, the citri citrusiness of it isn't reliant on uh, acid from the fruit, from a fruit like lemon or lime, but actually reliant on the, one of the, the, the spirits that you put inside the drink, which is, it's, it's really good. I really like that. I was really bracing myself for something that was going to be saccharine sweet and maybe a little, and, 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 and possibly unpalatable. And I was 100% proved wrong. Um, I think that there was a lot more thought that went into the balance of this drink than I really realized. And so I just want to tip my hat off to you, sir, for a fantastic, fantastic cocktail. All right, guys, the time has come. It is the zero hour. It is time to declare a winner. But before I do that, I just want to thank everyone that submitted their recipes and really put themselves out there. And I also want to say that even though I've said this before, I am blown away by the quality of the cocktails. I did an exhaustive tasting panel of these cocktails and I was, I was really hard pressed to, to kind of narrow three down. It was really, really difficult. There were a lot of really fantastic ones, really artful ones. I just want to say, give yourselves a pat on the back. Uh, especially if you're a home bartender and you're not doing this for a living because you guys killed it. You guys knocked it out of the park. These are the three that I picked that I really liked the best. And of these three, the one that I thought was the standout, the one that I thought was the most balanced and just, just a, I, I would drink six of them in a night is Peter Patrician's Floor de Peanut Butter Jerez Swizzle. This one is the winner. So Peter Patrician, congratulations. This was all just for bragging rights, but you have a lot to brag about, my friend. If you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Also check out our website, theeducatedbarfly.com for articles, our virtual bottle program, merch, recipes, uh, lots of good stuff there. So check that out. And again, I'm gonna say it, smash the like button and uh, hit subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video.